Uh, temperature of soil and air, I, I touched on this just a couple minutes ago, but I didn't really go into it in full detail. Um, ever looked at a seed catalog and seen like germination percent by soil temperature? Mm -hmm. At 50%, the carrots will germinate. At 50 degrees, the carrots will germinate at 60% of the seeds will germinate at 60 degrees. You know, 70% of them will germinate at 70 degrees, 90% of them will germinate at 80 degrees, 70% will germinate. There seems to be this sort of optimal germination temperature in the soil, which is around 70 degrees, if you look at all the different... Um, people will notice this, and people have seen a couple of nods, and a lot of people have looked at this. Um, in the wintertime, when somebody puts the heat on in their house, they have a thermostat. They usually set the temperature to, if you go to the office park, 68 to 72 ish, right? 60 is a little bit cool, 72 is a little bit warm. In the summertime, when people put on the um, air conditioning, they usually set it to 72 is a little bit warm, 60 is a little bit cool. Um, my understanding is there's something about the 70 degree temperature where life functions at an optimal level. Um, not that we're going to have 70 degree temperatures in the spring when you're planting your spinach and your peas into the soil, but 50 degrees is a hell of a lot better than 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And 55 is a hell of a lot better actually than 50. So for me, if you can wait a little while, what happens is the soil life actually doesn't like it at 50 either. And so when the soil temperature's at 50, they're shivering, they're not doing much. Every, you know, every 10 degrees, you basically get an order of magnitude of new, oh, maybe it's more than that, I'm not sure. There's a dramatic increase in soil <coughs> levels as the soil warms up. Um, so if you understand the, the importance of gut flora, you understand it's the soil life, it's the gut flora of your plant, putting your plants early into cold soil is a pretty good way to make sure they're not going to get fed well for a while. Um, so I, I personally am of the opinion that waiting a little while until the soil warms up is, is really a good idea when it comes to um, putting things into the ground. Whether they're transplants, obviously transplants are a little more resilient than seeds, but still, in general, that's the, that's the, that's the basic idea. Um, what do I do about, about the fact that it doesn't get warm? The soil doesn't get warm until, you know, May sometime. Um, I have a half an acre of hoop houses, personally. I'm experimenting constantly with building little, um, you can use those little, you know, wire hoops with Rime does an awesome uh, job. You can uh, build yourself um, cold frames over the feet to warm the soil up for um, you know, a couple of weeks early. I've got uh, what, what they call caterpillar tunnels. Um, driving down here, there's a whole massive field of caterpillar tunnels. Like I said, somebody's nursery. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure yes. where it was. <laughs> Over there somewhere. There's a big nursery with all these caterpillar. You look at the little hoop houses, oh, they're like yeah. eight, ten feet across. Yeah. Whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, that size structure. One metal hoop laid over the, you know, over the ground every four feet, one piece of greenhouse plastic can dramatically uh, increase your window of, 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 of growing. I generally take the plastic off around the end of April and put it back on around the you know, middle of September or so. Um, and you can really get a dramatic increase in, in, in time of growth. Um, I'll just, basically, this has been my most recent major infrastructure improvement. Um, it's uh, 14 feet across. It's about seven feet tall. Um, so basically I've got three beds in here. Three four foot beds in a, in a one little hoop house. Um, um, these hoops are, I think it's 20 foot um, metal, metal um, three quarter inch galvanized pipe. Conduit. Conduit. Um, and then I've got some other conduit that I've strung across the top that's literally held together with literally duct tape and fishing line. This is, <laughs> I built a 2,000 square foot hoop house in half a day. Um, you know, a couple pieces of rebar on the ground um, and one board screwed them all together in the bottom. And I can put the plastic on, take the plastic off. Um, you get a dramatic increase in, 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 uh, in the season. Um, I do my tomato plants on five foot centers down the middle. So greens, greens in the wintertime, fall, winter, and spring. Tomato plants down the middle in the summertime. And then I'll maybe do pole beans up the sides on the north side. And cucumbers up the south side. Um, all kinds of cool stuff you can do. Um, but 
but take into consideration the critical role of temperature. Understand the critical importance of temperature. Um, and little things you can do to help, you know, to moderate the temperature, I think, is really quite um, a good strategic uh, investment. Uh, basically, I like to say, for cold weather plants, anything that's in the brassica family, you know, um, um, I don't know, um, carrots, beets, uh, spinach, <coughs> anything, anything you be putting in, in the springtime. Um, I like to say, 50 degrees soil temperature is. Uh, is a good target to be aiming for, and 55 is preferable. And of course, you know how far down and morning or night, um, you know you can have your conversations back and forth about what that 50 is. But oftentimes your soil is not getting anywhere close to 50, and you've got your things in the ground. So um, play around with it. Um, I would prefer 55 over 50. And for warm, warm weather plants, you know tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, cucumbers, beans, squash, all that kind of stuff. 60 is a good baseline, and 65 would be opt would be better. Um, um, this may be if you actually figure it out when this looks like on the calendar, you may feel threatened and um, feel a need to plant earlier. Fine, but try planting a few things later and see what happens. Just experiment, experiment with putting things in a little bit later, and watch them, and watch you know how they proceed through the year, which are cost benefit analysis is because, like we said, with the seedlings with the summer squash. You may put the seedling in at the same time you put the seed in, but then a month and a half later, the seed is actually more, been more productive, it's less diseased, etc. And so you're really <coughs> performing yourself no benefit except psychological in a temporary manner to you know, put your seedlings in early. It may not actually be at all good for you, but you don't believe that until you try it yourself.